Hi everybody, it's Melissa from Welcome to the Woods. In this video, we're going to be redoing our back porch floor. This is the porch that we step off of from our kitchen, so we like to grill and dine out here. But here I'm showing you what we have going on on this floor. There's like this weird interior tile when you step up, and then there is a fur flooring that is tongue and groove, and it's super rotted along the edges. Here is the scoop. So this floor was once in an enclosed porch. This whole thing had walls and everything, and it was more like a mudroom getting into the you know old farmhouse. But the previous owner opened it up um, and built like some pine railings, and then since this floor got exposed to the elements more, the rain rotted out a lot of the edge and a lot of the joy system underneath. So we've had a little bit of issues with this, like letting maybe some rodents in our basement <laughs> and stuff like that. And it's just time to get it fixed. I'm panning the entire porch here just so you can get a feel for what it looks like now. The beadboard ceiling's cool. We're going to keep that. I'm going to be doing lighting, um, like post wrap and new railings in the next video as well. But in this one, I'm going to show you what we did for the floor. Okay, let's get started on this floor. So the first step is demolition, obviously, and a lot of this stuff is tongue and groove. It came apart with wrecking bar and hammer, but some areas were like nailed down. So those got a reciprocating saw. Um, I am doing some of the work in this project, but the vast majority of it was uh, hired help from our neighbor, John, who also helped me with our fence last fall. And the reason is because I'm starting to get hugely pregnant. So I just did little bits here and there where I could, um, but mostly we had John work on this. And I'm going to walk you through the process of how this got changed from this rotted fur floor to a beautiful composite decking material, which I'll elaborate on a little later in this video. So here you can see that half the floor is gone. We're starting to expose the joists, which are, you know, solid wood, but they're 24 inches on center. We need to add quite a bit of joist system. And here is my awesome handy neighbor. He is using the reciprocating saw here to get that nail out that's underneath our siding. Fortunately, the new siding we had installed is installed at like a height where the depth of the floor we're taking out is the same as the depth we're putting in and we don't need to adjust anything or add any molding. Once everything was actually demolished, we could see the scope of the rot and it was actually worse than I was expecting. Um, we're going to be adding in not only extra joists that run 12 inches on center for the composite decking, but we are also going to add sister joists on what was currently in the f like front where all the rot happened along the edge and gets exposed to rain a lot. They didn't used to have green treated wood when this joist system was originally constructed, so a lot of this wood just did not withstand the elements outside. Prepping to lay the new floor took two days, and here you'll see John measuring 12 inch joist centers, moving the two by eights where we needed to go, and then screwing them together. We were both surprised when we took it apart to see that the 6x6 six six posts that hold up the ceiling don't actually go all the way down to the cement footings. They just rested on the previous rotting fur floor. So we removed as much of that flooring underneath the posts as we could. And then what we did was supported them underneath with more 6x6 six six treated lumber these were just like leftover posts actually one of my neighbors gave me so that was fortunate i didn't have to buy these pieces of lumber they can get kind of pricey the six by six posts actually were quite warped so on a lot of them we removed the support underneath and then like pried them up with a big wrecking bar so that they were more square to what we needed before adding that like six by six green treated underneath we also had to cut a notch out of the 6x6 six six piece that we added after like sledgehammering them underneath, which I'm showing pans of here, because they had to be the same height as where the floor is going to go, and that wasn't exactly the same height as where the 6x6 six six post ended. <laughs> so, Another thing to fix were the cracks, and this is actually the culprit of how mice were getting in our house. Did you see that crack right underneath the door? 
So I had John fill it with some cement. There were actually quite a few cracks in these cement footings, but in general, we thought the integrity of them was fine. We just wanted to prevent cracks where, you know, rodents or insects can access under there. When we filled the hole underneath the door, we also had a ton of bumblebees start coming out, so I think we covered a nest. We did another uh, precaution. We added some flashing along, you know, the house so that that moisture doesn't get behind that joist and rot it. And then this netting, which I bought like an eighth inch steel wire mesh netting that we're stapling down into the joist as well as the flashing, kind of getting everything covered up so that when we lay the decking on top of it, it's going to hopefully prevent any issues with unwanted house guests. So now it's finally time to lay the floor and this beautiful color of composite decking is manufactured from armadillo decking. I've used it before in my video where I built our front steps. So the back porch is actually going to speak to what is currently in the front of the house. The decking is so easy to use as long as you have your prep work done. So building the joist system was important because this stuff is made from 95% recycled plastic. It can be heavy, but it's also a little bit pliable. Um, so it needs a lot of support for it to feel sturdy to walk on. I go into a lot more details about the specific installation of a composite decking material like this in my video of building the steps. So if you wanna check that out, be sure to click that link. It'll be in the description and in the cards. But basically this stuff is so easy to cut with a miter saw or a circular saw and it connects together with this groove system and these very easy to use turbo clips which have plastic like grips and then you screw the plastic clips down into your joist every 12 inches. Usually you do that as you install each board. This clip is just showing John adding extra ones where we step onto the porch and there's gonna be a lot of heavy foot traffic. You can see in our flooring install, we just cut the flooring around each of the posts so that it looked more cohesive versus trying to get it underneath the six by six posts that hold up the roof. So now the flooring was done, it was time to cut the fascia boards that are going to go around the edges and really trim out this floor. This piece needed to get notched out of the 11 and a half inch wide fascia board to go along the front and then go like behind the cement step that we had going on to get onto the porch. And I'll show you just here how that fits. The edges of each fascia board are completely finished, so we made it so that they just rise up and cover the ends of each of the cut boards that lay the actual floor. The ends of the fascia we mitered so that the corners meet up and cover the cut ends. So the fascia board just gets screwed in. It doesn't have any fancy turbo clips into the joist system with composite decking screws. Like I mentioned earlier, I am expecting a baby in August, and so when this project was happening, I was some seven months pregnant, and because John had to do a lot of the heavy lifting in this project, I was left to do things like tear apart the pallet that materials arrived on, caulk the seams from the mitered corners, and just, you know, do a little touch up here and there. This, I'm gonna be honest, was hard for me um, on, <laughs> my psyche basically because I I just I'm used to DIYing and it was hard to watch somebody else work on my house without being able to get my hands in there and help very much but I think that I couldn't be prouder with how the flooring actually turned out and I could still do things to beautify and celebrate this upgrade to our home like planting flowers and actually I threw a party that the porch got used excessively like shortly after it was done and that was really great so here's a little close-up you can see the turbo clips installed between each piece of the decking and then the wire mesh that's underneath protecting the underside from any issues i think that the color especially is beautiful i love this vibrant color variation it's called campfire and if you're interested in buying this flooring you can find a link in the description on this video 
The install of this type of project is actually really straightforward, especially when you have a simple rectangular porch like I did. And I'm amazed that even though it was so easy, it just created such an upgraded feel. Now we don't have any sponginess or rot, and I don't anticipate having that issue anytime soon because we constructed with pressure treated materials and this composite decking is almost maintenance free. I think we're gonna be using this porch a lot, a lot more now and I'm excited to show you guys coming up how we also did the railings and post wrap in my next video. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. If you loved it, then don't forget to let me know what you thought in the comments. If you've done a project similar, I'd love to hear your experience. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more from Welcome to the Woods. Mm -hmm.